Knockout City is the latest EA original to be released this year. It's a new wacky 3v3 online dodgeball game. It's filled with a ton of style and charm, with probably one of the best game loss strategies I've seen in quite a while. For $20, you can pick up the game on just about any platform, pick it up for free on EA Play or Game Pass, and it supports crossplay and voice chat on every platform. Needless to say, I was very excited to check this out, and boy did I have a blast. But before we jump into this review, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to stay up to date whenever I put up another review. With all that said, let's jump into this review starting with gameplay, as there really isn't a story here. Knockout City is the second game from Valen Studios. You might have heard of their first game, Mario Kart Live. Their second game is primarily an online game, so you have to be connected to the internet in order to play, and sadly there isn't any local split screen. Instead, you'll connect online with either strangers or friends to compete in various dodgeball games. The idea of an online dodgeball game was a bit weird to me. It didn't necessarily catch my attention, but once I got my review copy earlier this week, I was immediately hooked on it. The core concept is quite simple. You play in groups of three as you take on another group of three in these small sandbox maps. Depending on the game mode, the objective changes but ultimately they revolve around knocking out the enemy team with various dodgeballs around the map. What made the concept so interesting to me were the various mechanics that help flesh out the core design philosophy. After you create your customizable character, you're dropped into this training room and from there you can practice various moves on a dummy unit. You can walk or run across the map. You have a standard jump that evolves into a glider with the second jump, perfect for hovering across the map. A dash move lets you quickly move toward a sought after dodgeball, or perhaps tackle an enemy that's coming at you with a ball. Ironically, you can even turn into a ball. Not only can it be used as a movement mechanic, but in dire situations where your team doesn't have a dodgeball, just throw your teammates instead. Of course, that comes with the possibility of having your teammates get caught and thrown off the stage. There's a risk and reward there that's ever present but so thrilling to execute. When you do have a ball, you can quickly throw it or hold it down for a faster charge shot. What I loved was that there was also the ability to fake throw the ball. That comes in handy because at any point you throw the ball, the enemy can catch it if it's timed correctly. Faking them out is a fun way to really add tension to these moments, and in my time playing this week, led to many back and forth adrenaline filled moments that were some of the most memorable moments in multiplayer gaming for me this year. Adding a bit more chaos to these matches is the ability to throw the ball in either a curve or hoop motion on top of the traditional throw. These along with various types of dodgeballs make for some chaotic but joyous matches. There's your standard ball with no special effects, then the bomb ball that acts like a sticky bomb, the cage ball that traps the receiver in a trap, the sniper ball that feels like a football with an ACOG on it, the multi ball gives you three balls in one, and lastly the moon ball that not only adds zero gravity to the ball but also to the holder as well. More balls and maps are planned for the future, but for the starting lineup I was pretty happy and content with what Knockout City had to offer. In total there are five game modes for launch, although like maps and the ball types, more are planned for the future. Team KO feels like the default mode, putting two teams of three against another team in a race to get 10 KOs. The balance here feels well thought out, and I found myself actively coming back for more. The face-off mode is a streamlined version of the previous mode, this time it's a 1v1 race to get 3 KOs, perfect for anyone trying to settle a quick score with a friend. Diamond Dash is this game's version of Call of Duty's Kill Confirmed. As you take out opponents, you gather the diamonds that fall out of them in a race to collect 30 points. KO Chaos is a 4 player free for all where the race is to get 10 KOs first. Lastly, there's Ball Up Brawl, a mode where you're forced to only use your teammates as the ball. This was a fun twist on the gameplay as it required a lot more team coordination than any other game mode thus far. At launch, there's a total of 5 maps, each with its own unique designs and structures that change up the structure of the game. The Boba Cola stage, for example, features a bridge connecting the two sides of the map. It features a choke point in the middle where it's easy to get pinched while going after the dodgeball that spawns in the middle. At the same time, you're able to quickly glide across the map instead, but at the risk of being hit in the air. The Galaxy Burger stage, on the other hand, has a spinning platform in the middle of the stage with various layers and dodgeballs in between. After playing a few rounds, you'll notice that you'll begin to accumulate both level XP that helps unlock new playlists for you to play, along with currency for cosmetics. Knockout City prides itself in not running a pay to win model, and thus you won't find any gameplay bonuses here. Instead, the only microtransactions here are towards cosmetics which can be earned by simply playing the game. Knockout City has a bright and saturated cartoon look to it. My first impression of it was that it looked like AA's attempt at capturing Fortnite, and while the art style impression hasn't really changed since then, I kind of like it. I love the variety of themes that each map brought, from the theme park like Galaxy Burger stage that felt like a real amusement park attraction, to the frantic construction stage with movie construction helping evolve the map. Characters certainly have this Fortnite look to them as well, but I still enjoyed the customization features available. As far as performance goes, I played on both a PC and Nintendo Switch, pretty much the high and low of the performance spectrum. 
On PC, I was able to easily maintain a 1080p 60fps performance on max settings on a GTX 1080 Ti rig. It's not an intensive game by any means, and most modern rigs should be able to power just fine. That's most apparent when you switch over to the Nintendo Switch. Knockout City offers two game presets here, a quality or performance mode. Playing in quality mode bumps up the resolution of the gameplay to 720p 30fps in handheld, 1080p 30 in dock mode. In performance mode, that's dropped down to 810p 60fps in dock mode and 540p 60fps in handheld mode. The performance mode, while blurry, was my preferred way to play on Switch. While both modes keep a mostly locked 30 and 60 FPS respectively, I found it more challenging to enjoy the mobility and the aiming at 30 FPS, especially after playing mostly on a PC. Knockout City has an interesting variety of tracks that feel like they captured the era of street skate culture. It's not just that though, there's a mix of jazz in here too. If anything, it almost reminds me of the songs I'd hear at Warp Tour when they'd come down to Ventura for their tour. Nevertheless, the music here is catchy and delivers all the right vibes. In regards to the sound design, there are some great choices made to capture that atmosphere for the variety of different maps, whether it was the bustling cars in the city map or the small details of construction in the construction zone. I really enjoyed duking it out. Perhaps one of my favorite details were the subtle sounds of the rubber dodgeball with every throw, hit, and catch in the game. Perhaps it's that I played a bit too much dodgeball in the elementary school, that it's been ingrained in my brain, but that in-game sound effect delivers some major serotonin. Knockout City is shockingly, and I say this because it didn't win me over until I got my hands on it, one of my favorite games of 2021. It finds a great balance between crafting a fun adrenaline rushed experience that feels so well thought out. It's a budget friendly multiplayer game with ease of access through a free trial and being on Game Pass. Performance is solid across all platforms and it doesn't dive deep into microtransactions and it's overall just a fun time without the toxicity of most modern online shooters. Outside of one or two bad online connections and wanting perhaps a bit of a wider player pool game mode, I'm very happy with Knockout City and I can't wait to finish editing this just so I can go back to playing. Thank you so much for watching this review. If you liked the video then let me know with a thumbs up and a comment down below. I'm in actual shock how much I ended up liking this game. Like, I didn't care about this game at all a month ago for full transparency, but it totally won me over. If you give it a shot, let me know what you think. I'm excited to see what everyone's reception is going to be like. Anyway, I gotta get back to playing Biomute and Metopia. Those are the next reviews you'll be seeing on here, but until then, I'll talk to you in the comments down below or over on my Discord server. You can join with the link in the description.